Oh, I, I wanted to start out by just you know bringing you up to date on what's happened today. President Obama went before the nation for a very brief, a five-minute talk. Here are a few short clips from it. Here's uh, number one, Jacob. What's clear now is that any solution to avoid default must be bipartisan. It must have the support of both parties that were sent here to represent the American people, not just one faction. Yeah, and, uh, you know, just let me add a little commentary here. The Both the Reed, the Democratic bill out of the Senate, and the Boehner bill out of the House, both of them basically say, we're going to save a whole pile of money, some of it now with some specific cuts that uh, we're kind of generally describing, and most of it mm, a year or so from now, and we're going to have a commission of six Democrats and six Republicans, 12, 12 members of Congress who are going to sit in a room, uh, you know, with their cigars and their cocktails and figure out who's going to get hurt. And this is no way to run a government. I am opposed to the Reed bill. I am opposed to the Boehner bill. I'm opposed to all of them. None of them ask for a single penny from America's millionaires, billionaires, or corporations that aren't paying taxes. But GE doesn't pay a penny in taxes, and they just, a Jeff M. Melt, the CEO, just announced this week that he's moving his X-ray machine division headquarters from Wisconsin to China. So I mean, it, it, this is just nuts. Bottom line is, yeah, and, and Dennis Kucinich has laid this out very well. There's a piece over at Daily Co's, you know, where he, he just lays it out. You know, a quarter of our debt, or our deficit, excuse me, a quarter of our debt was run up by Reagan, Bush, and Bush, by and large. But a quarter of our deficit, the annual shortfall, is the result of the Bush tax cuts. And the Bush tax cuts, you've, you've chopped away a quarter of it. A quarter of it is is the result of our wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. And the wars bring the troops home. In fact, if you, you, you don't want to let them out of the military, say, and many of them would like to get out there on the third, fourth, fifth tour of duty, but if you don't want to let them out, fine. Put them to work building bridges or something. But end the wars, and you save another quarter of the total deficit. The third quarter of the total deficit is what Medicare is having to pay because they can't negotiate discounts on prescription drugs. They have to pay full retail a $680 billion subsidy to the pharmaceutical industry over a, every decade. And then the fourth quarter of the, of the deficit, which makes up the whole deficit now, the last piece of the deficit is caused by the recession we're in, which is the result of the banksters crashing our economy. So tighten the rules on the banksters, throw some banksters in jail, put a securities transaction tax into, into place, which ends high-frequency high trading, so that people go back to buying stock because, you know, it's the good thing to do. And then I would add to that, not just rolling back the Bush tax cuts, roll back the Reagan tax cuts. Take, take taxes on the rich back to where they were in 1980 at 74% when we had a strong economy. The, the, the greatest growth, it was a 3.2% 3, or plus in the decade of the 50s, the decade of the 60s, the decade of the 70s. And then Reagan dropped... Dragon dropped taxes in 81, and what did you have in 82? A recession. The unemployment went up two full points. So, you know, just let's, let's roll back the Reagan tax cuts, too. Let's just clean the slate. By the way, Rick Snyder, the, 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 the wackadoodle Republican who is the governor of Michigan, and we're on the air in a number of stations in Michigan, in Detroit, in Ann Arbor, in Lansing, um, in Grand Rapids, Rick Snyder, the governor of Michigan, is uh, yeah, there's a very strong recall effort, and it is continuing. And you can just Google recall Rick Snyder fairly easily. If you live in the Detroit area, the, the, the folks in Westland, Michigan, are going to be having a gig tonight, 8 o'clock, across from the Westland Mall, just as an FYI, if you happen to be listening on WDTW in Detroit. Um, I used to live in Westland. Nice, nice community. Anyhow. So what's going on here is we have a laboratory in the states that we, we have seen what happens. 25 states are largely Republican controlled. And in the in the year and a half or two and a half years, excuse me, since uh, President Obama became president, 25 states have cut taxes, cut spending. 24 ta states have raised taxes and raised spending. Now. If there has been a consistent result among those, and one state, Alabama, has done neither. 
They've just pretty much stayed the same. So if there's been a consistent result between the 25, excuse me, 25 who raise taxes and raise spending or the 24 who cut spending and cut taxes, that should tell us something about what we should be doing at the federal level, right? Well, it turns out that the states that raise taxes and raise spending saw their GDP go up an average of a half a point and saw unemployment drop. Whereas the states that cut spending in their state, that laid off workers, and they've laid off about a half a million of them cumulatively across the country, these Republican states. They cut taxes, they cut spending, and guess what happened? Their, their GDP, their economic activity, has dropped an average of a half a point, and their unemployment rates have gone up. Now, you just think about it. It's, it's, this is common sense. Federal spending accounts for a little over 20% of our total economy. That's jobs. They may be jobs working for the government or jobs working for contractors who are making things that are bought by the government. And the government buys everything from paper clips and staples to computers to, you know, you name it, right? If they, you know, uh, dump trucks, cars, everything. You cut federal spending, what you are going to do is you are going to lay people off. Isn't that insane in a recession? Harry Reid is talking about cutting over a trillion dollars out of government spending. He's going to throw us into a, uh, into a recession and probably into a depression. John Boehner wants to make it even worse. John Boehner wants to, th not, wants to not only cut what Harry Reid wants to cut, but he also wants to, uh, to cut into Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. This is what the Republicans are all about. And on top of that, he wants to say that this is going to be revisited around Christmas time because this is only a four or five month extension. It gets revisited around Christmas time when people are really concerned about the interest rates on their credit cards. And by the way, you can't raise the debt ceiling then unless both the House of Representatives and the Senate by a two thirds vote pass a balanced budget amendment to send it to the, to the states. A balanced budget amendment is Congress's way of saying that they are incapable of doing their own job. It is an admission of failure. It's an admission of, it, it, it's like, you know, John Boehner out there waving a flag and saying, we're pathetic. That's what a balanced budget amendment is. It's like, okay, we can't do it. You have to make us. You know, we had less than a trillion dollars in debt from the administration of George Washington until until Ronald Reagan came into office. And then Ronald Reagan took that eight hundred billion dollars in debt and jacked it up to three trillion, nearly three trillion. Just about tripled it. And that's been the Republic playbook ever since. Jude Wittiski laid it out in 1978 uh, or 76, I, uh, one of the other years in his two Santa Claus theory memo. When the Republicans are in power, spend like drunken sailors. The minute you get a Democrat in the White House, start screaming about the debt. They have been playing this exactly according to their playbook for 32 years. And why the Republicans or why the Democrats haven't figured this out and pointed it out and why the American people don't know about it is an absolute statement of the profound and startling failure of our media. Why are you not hearing about this on corporate media? Why is it the corporate media never talks about Jude Wininski's Two Santa Claus Theory, or the Republican Playbook, or what Paul Weyrich said back in 1980 about how he wanted to disenfranchise voters?